Okay, it's one minute past 3 p.m. here in Finland, so let's start today's session. Today's webinar is called Supporting Employee Resilience During Times of Change, Case Cargo Tech. And I'm joined here by Syria Grant from Cargo Tech, and I'll introduce her properly in just a few minutes. But uh, I'm Tina Hoffman, Master Trainer and Exercise Physiologist at, at First Beat, and Syria and I have been working on this project together during the, this winter, and it's really great to be actually sharing a little bit about what we did and hopefully give some ideas for other coaches and also for other corporates who might be interested in projects like this. The webinar is going to last approximately 45 minutes, no longer than that. There's a Q&A box that you can write questions during the webinar, and then we'll answer them at the end of the session. And uh, we are also recording the session so that if you have to leave early or something like that, you will get the recording then afterwards. And here is our agenda for today. So first, uh, since we have some new listeners online, I'll do a short introduction of who First Beat is and what is First Beat Life. And then after that, Syria will introduce CargoTech, tell a little bit about their demerger plan and what kind of employee engagement and wellness strategy they had during this time of change. And then after that background, we'll then take a more detailed look at what, what kind of a first speed project we included in Cargotex project this spring. What, what how and why we, we used first speed live. And then I'll share a few sort of individual level and uh, findings and also a few group level findings. And, and then, like I mentioned, we'll take questions in the end. And I also have some really good questions already in advance. So we'll definitely be discussing those. In the picture here, this is from our kickoff meeting back in February at the Cargotech space in Helsinki, where I was doing the, the kickoff presentation. So a few words about First Beat. First Beat, we are a Finnish company based in Jyväskylä. We have been operating in this area of measuring people's heartbeats and developing technology and solutions for, for wellness services, elite sports and consumer wearables for 20 years now. And we are considered a pioneer in this area of providing this kind of detailed, accurate physiological data for different kinds of professional solutions. We are based on a lot of research. Hundreds and thousands of research projects have utilized first beat methods. And then in addition to that, today over a thousand wellness professionals use first beat in, in part of their corporate wellness services. And then over a thousand elite sports teams or, or training centers are using first beat sports to to develop and improve the performance of their athletes. The specialty, what we do is to help develop professional solutions to optimize performance of athletes or, or of regular people. And we have clients and users in over 70 countries today. And then this first beat live, that's going to be sort of today's focus. So we, we start with very accurate data, a device that measures every heartbeat during daily life, at work, during leisure time, and during sleep, and measures the time between heartbeats so that we can analyze heart rate variability. We feel like this kind of very highly accurate data is the basis of, of reliable measurements, and then also being able to draw conclusions from the results that we can, we can trust and uh, be confident about. The, the device is paired with First Beat Life app that each user who makes a measurement, they have the device for themselves, and then they have the First Beat Life app on their phone, and they can see their own results on the app each time when they do a measurement and, and get different kinds of insights and, and sentences and ideas of how their result was or each time that they do a measurement. And then what truly makes the First Beat Life a professional tool or a professional choice for stress and wellness measurements is that the coach who utilizes this kind of a method, whether it's a health or wellness coach or fitness coach, or like myself in this case, being the coach for this project, I have access to the client's result via this professional portal that we have developed. So each coach can, can sort of manage their client projects, but also access individual and group results via that portal, instead of relying just on the result that the client can see in the app. And this differentiates us quite significantly from, for example, typical wearable devices. And then just an example of what, what it actually means. What is the output that we get from this kind of data? This is a typical sort of a 24-hour measurement. Anybody who has done a first bit measurement recognizes the colors, red meaning some kind of stress 
energy activation. It's good and bad stress. So it's not anything that we need to eliminate from life. It helps us deal with different things and helps us perform. I think Syria and I are probably both now in red because we are delivering and focusing on doing this nicely and well for all of the listeners. But then we also need to have some of that green color, which is recovery. It means that the nervous system is relaxing and the heart rate is slowing down, heart rate variability is growing. And the idea is kind of to look at the balance between these two states in different kinds of days. And the blue color means exercise or physical activity. And from that, we calculate different kinds of numbers and indexes. And then also the program provides different kinds of insights. And this also comes in the discussion with the coach. Perhaps they find out that the, they might get information that there was actually very little recovery across all the measurement days during the work time. Maybe that's something that the person needs to focus on. They're feeling somewhat stressed. They might get a note that they are typically exercising very late in the evening, which might be influencing their sleep, for example, like in this case. But they might also get positive notes that their sleep duration is good and their sleep rhythm is regular. So even a person whose result might be quite bad usually gets some kind of good lifestyle insights about things that they're doing right. And that's the idea to learn from daily behaviors during different kinds of days and then learn what kinds of things you could maybe change and adjust to improve wellness and, and, and health in that way. But at this point, I'm going to give the reins to Syria. I welcome, welcome her on board. Syria Gran is a HR director of group functions at Cargotech. She has 15 years of experience in working and leading successful HR initiatives and is very passionate about fostering a positive work environment, leadership development, and building strategies that align business goals with people goals. So Syria, welcome aboard and now I'll let you take it from here. Thank you so much, Tina, and, and pleasure to be here with you, uh, hopefully delivering uh, some thoughts and ideas for, for others as well uh, with similar projects. Uh, I'll share my screen then uh, next. Uh, let me give it a go. One second, have the correct slides uh, with you. All right, um, for the ones that uh, do not know Cargotech, uh, a couple of words of us as a company first. Uh, we're global leader in sustainable cargo flow. So we talk about cargo handling, load handling solutions. And uh, based on last year's figures, uh, we're about four and a half million euros uh, company in sales, operating in more than 100 countries and uh, um, a bit more than 11,400 employees uh, work for us at Cargotech uh, across the globe in, in most of the continents uh, of the world. We have uh, today uh, three business areas, we call them BAs. Uh, for the reference uh, to my uh, slides upcoming, um, going forward, uh, Kalmar uh, is our uh, global leader in, in cargo handling for ports. Uh, so when you are uh, seeing in ports a lot of these uh, uh, different uh, reach trackers and such moving around, usually those are Kalmar equipment and in quite a few segments uh, we're the world uh, leader there. Um, HIAB uh, is, uh, is another uh, of its own uh, leading provider then of a more uh, smart and sustainable on the road type of load handling solution. So uh, you, you will see uh, a lot of our products like Zephros when you are uh, with your car in, in, the, in the traffic uh, in the back of the, uh, of the trucks. Um, and then McGregor is uh, thirdly <clears throat> our, our third business area, which is then representing about 16% of our sales, so uh, significantly smaller uh, than the first two ones. And, and then if we have the ports uh, and the road, and then McGregor is working on the sea, so working with sustainable maritime cargo and, uh, and load handling solutions. So that's shortly about us and, and my role is, uh, is work, uh, to be uh, working with uh, the whole of Cargotech and, and the different functions. We have HR, finance, uh, IT, comms, strategy, ethics and compliance, legal and so forth that are serving by all of the three BAs and I'm, I'm responsible uh, for that uh, in, in HR business partner role. All right, then um, uh, 
a boring disclaimer, but a needed one. Uh, we are over going through uh, a project uh, which is, uh, I would say, one of a kind probably uh, in one's career. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be showing a couple of slides that include forward-looking statements and, uh, and estimates and so forth. So a disclaimer that is, this information is, is then subject to quite a few approvals, uh, but I wanted to share the full project details with you. And then all of the slides are, of course, publicly uh, being presented in, in our annual journal meetings and, and such. Um, the, the project that I'm talking about is, uh, has started uh, last April where Carcadec Board has uh, decided to investigate and initiate a process to separate uh, the core, two core businesses, the, the biggest ones that you saw on the, on the overview slide, Kalmar and Haya, into two standalone listed companies. So uh, breaking the company into two listed companies instead of one, and, and then uh, looking for a, a solution uh, for McGregor. Um, some of the dates uh, are here on, on this slide, if you're interested in, in more of the details. Uh, actually, uh, we have AGM uh, happening as we speak, annual general meeting uh, in, uh, in Helsinki, and about uh, 32 minutes ago, it was approved uh, by the shareholders' uh, vote that the demerger, the partial demerger, will uh, happen. So we are going to list a new company uh, in the Nasdaq Helsinki, uh, which is going to have a name Kalmar on it. And then at the same time, we're looking for a solution for McGregor during the course of 2024. And thus the remaining BA high up will then eventually take Carcadec's uh, stock listing position. So uh, Carcadec will then cease to exist. You can imagine that the employees that are uh, working for all of the three BAs and, and then seeing this kind of a picture that illustrates the strategy that, okay, Kalmar is going to be its own listed company, Hyab is going to be another one, and McGregor is going to be sold. Uh, and at the same time, we need to keep the, uh, uh, operationally, uh, the wheels rolling. It has, it has be, uh, uh, been quite a bit of a challenging time uh, for the group functions uh, employees who have been working to support all of the three BAs. Our focus, of course, has been that, that we are building these three uh, different uh, new starts uh, for the BAs and, and specifically for Kalmar and Haya, the readiness to work uh, independently as a listed company going forward from here and, uh, and then uh, building those functional capabilities uh, that have not existed uh, prior to this date within the BAs, but they have been being serviced. Uh, through the Carcadec platform uh, prior to this date. How do we then uh, go forward from here? How do we keep, make sure that our employees are on track uh, with this and, and stay with us uh, through the change? Here are, I actually took, this is, this is the uh, bullet points that we had in the Stierko meeting when we were planning uh, this employee uh, focused project that I'm going to be talking with Tina here a bit more, uh, that, that we want to truly make sure that we help our people through the change and, um, and then making sure that we are addressing that there is enough uh, adequate support when we're going through these extraordinary uh, times and, and, and very many unknowns in, in, in very many different areas and for sure increasing the levels of, of stress uh, for our employees. Um, our latest, uh, we, we do a monthly pulse survey and then an annual, uh, annual um, employee engagement survey that shows that, that we have a, a fantastic level of overall favorability in the, uh, within the group functions employees. That's uh, over 80% uh, as per the latest uh, measurement. Uh, we, of course, want to foster that and make sure that, that our uh, group functions employees feel important and informed and, and safe uh, throughout the uncertain times and, and then also help them towards new challenges inside and outside the company. Um, all in all, uh, our uh, kind of shining star has been that we would like to provide as much clarity as possible uh, for our employees uh, as soon as possible and, and, uh, and of course communicate uh, as, as 
much as possible as early on, because for many of them, this meant that you have been today working at Cargotech, and in the future, you will be working with Kalmar, which is a completely another listed company, or the same goes and then for Haya or even for McGregor, where we don't even know who the uh, future owner of the company will be. Um, it, it not making it easier, most of these functional roles are, are both business critical um, and then uh, important for us to make a successful completion of the project. It's not, not that easy to, uh, to uh, carve out uh, a new company and then make sure that it's uh, independence ready for, for operating on an old uh, listed company uh, instance. Uh, but, but for the time being, we have been very successful in, uh, in not losing uh, critical talent, uh, keeping the employee engagement level high, and, and also then enabling uh, the BA independence level uh, and the continuation uh, of, the, of the work through these uh, transferring employees uh, from the group functions to the BAs. And then uh, what was our, our plan? Uh, we, we had uh, three focus areas um, uh, that we wanted to focus on building different initiatives around these three baskets. Uh, the first one is, is related to well-being. Uh, whilst we do have a great employee uh, engagement scores, we did see that the stress-related uh, questions were the ones that were scoring the lowest, hence uh, an, an, an area of uh, focus for us. Um, and we were thinking that what would be a good solution uh, to, to have concrete data uh, on this topic and, and hence uh, started to work uh, discussing with first beat and, and we'll discuss, describe that in more detail in a second. Um, the second focus area is developing yourself professionally, even though we're going through uh, once in a lifetime type of uh, project, which is super interesting uh, work-wise as well. We felt that it's important that, that we keep our staff kind of up to date with what's happening around us in the world. And, and we selected AI uh, as one of the main themes uh, together with sustainability here on this uh, section. And then not to lose uh, the, the fun factor. So having fun together, celebrating the success and, uh, and, and working, uh, working hard together, but also then uh, rewarding our employees uh, uh, when, when milestones are met. Um, if you want to see a, a bit more detailed view, how did that look like? Uh, this was for the spring 2024. We started uh, somewhere in, in late uh, January with the comms and, and then have been now going through the spring time uh, with this agenda. With the well-being focus that we have, the special focus today, uh, we had first a launch event um, and then some sessions uh, together with our, uh, our master coach, uh, Tina, from, uh, from First Beat that we had a very good um, cooperation with. And then um, a, couple, a week back, we had a resilience workshop um, to support this uh, theme as well. As mentioned, the AI and sustainability uh, were the ones that we focused on on the on the. Uh, developing myself professionally uh, part um, and of course this have a direct correlation on, on employee well-being and, and employee engagement uh, if we take care of this part and then having fun together the next uh, topic that we're all looking forward to is that we're going to host a party for 200 employees uh, outside um, here in Helsinki in the archipelago so looking forward to to that one as well but this was the kind of uh, additional activities that, that we put in place to support our employees uh, through these uh, times of change. And, and then handing it back to Tina to talk about the project with first bit uh, with more details. Thanks, Syria. Really great to have been involved in this and to see such a proactive approach to, to well-being and, and taking care of employees, knowing that you had to expect some challenges, so you really took such a proactive approach to that. And uh, from the first day that I started working with that, it was very obvious that there was genuine caring for those, those kind of issues. And uh, it truly has been a very enjoyable project for me as well. So I thought that uh, we would, I, I'll kind of outline how exactly we did the first bit 
part of the project. That was only one part like Syria's previous slide showed. There was many other aspects to that, but this is how we integrated First Peak Life into this, into this project. So we started off in fe February. We had a kickoff, so-called kickoff event, where there was also some, some uh, presentations by the Carcodec team leaders. But then my part was to first start off with a lecture on stress management, called stress management from surviving to thriving. So some sort of general important information about stress and how to approach that and how th things that anybody, whether they're doing measurements or not, is, is good to be aware of how you could maybe handle stressful situations in a healthier way. But then we also had an actual sign up event where people got information on how to get started with First Beat Life. And I'll actually share in the next slide, I'll show a few more details for especially coaches who might be interested in seeing <clears throat> exactly how we manage to sort of have two different kinds of starting processes for that. And after that, after the kickoff event, people, people who got, got involved in the measurements, they got their first bit devices and they were able to independently, independently make measurements in their daily life uh, whenever they wanted. Some people made several measurements, but the recommendation was to make at least one three-day measurement before our second session so that they can really get the most out of the next session that we had planned. So they had the device and the app and they had free hands to measure themselves whenever they wanted to. And they always got this kind of a result after the measurement. So they didn't have to wait for our next meeting to get their results. Then on March 19th, so a month and a half after the initial start, we had a group session. These events were all on site at the Cargotec office in Helsinki because that was that was part of the desire was to be able to bring people together in the same room and actually have this kind of face-to-face -face interaction. And for my part, that was super great about the whole project because ever since the pandemic, so many projects nowadays are done as online projects only. But this, of course, it enabled online participation because many of the participants were in different countries, but we always had a nice large group of people on site as well. And that really brought such energy to the project for, for my aspect too. The March session was so-called group coaching session. So I actually went through a fairly detailed presentation about how to interpret the individual result, not sharing any participants results, but I had anonymous slides with examples from the result. What does the red and green mean and how to interpret the different scores and numbers. So. We didn't really focus on the group results so much as to make sure that everybody understands how to, to read the individual result. And in addition to that, we I had booked half a day at the office, so I had a chance to have many one-to-one -one discussions, either online or face-to-face -face with people who wanted to ask some kind of details about their own result. Maybe they had a very challenging result or not much recovery, and they wanted to sort of make sure that should they be truly worried? Should they maybe see a doctor? Or is this something that they can start fix, fixing with some kind of simple solution? So that was the way we were able to personalize the offering for those who did want to have that kind of a little bit more detailed attention. Then we had, again, independent measurements, chance to measure. And it was very clear that after the March session, there was many more people starting to measure. Some had been maybe a little bit shy to get started in the beginning, but this group session kind of got them interested and seeing that, oh yeah, that's really, I ought to really try that. And uh, there was a nice burst of measurements done, done after the March session. Again, people were encouraged to experiment in their daily life, maybe try different things, measure different kinds of days not worry if the scores are always really good or ever improving, but instead try to learn from different kind of daily daily habits and behaviors, how that affected their well-being. And then we had sort of the final part of this interactive part of the process was in April, April 25th. We had a lecture called Load of Life, Draining or Gaining, where I was discussing sort of the, the, the big picture of well-being and how stress and recovery and sleep and exercise, how it all comes together and how people could have better tools to handle with that kind of load. And again, people had a chance to discuss and ask questions in the group setting, but also I had some time for one-to-ones as well. So this was sort of the interactive part of the project, but the group still has the devices till the rest of the year. So they were encouraged to continue measuring at appropriate intervals, maybe once a month, maybe before the summer holiday and then after the summer holiday. And we might continue with some kind of an interactive 
session again in the fall. But for right now, they are sort of on their own with their devices, ready to or free to measure whenever they want to do that. And just to highlight the idea that we were able to do this kind of a large group of people from several different countries, some around Finland, but some also in different parts of Europe, we had two different starting processes for them that we outlined in clear detail because it's it's really important to make it easy to get started. So the people who were on site in Helsinki, they had a chance to sign up and, and physically pick up the device. So we actually handed out devices and they were able to take it home and download the app and get started right away. So it was super simple for those people who were actually physically there. But then for those those probably more than half of the group that were on online somewhere from farther away, they got an email that welcomed them to the project and then they allowed they were able to download the app and then order the device directly via the first bit live app to their home address, for example. So this group had to wait a few weeks before they got their device, but after that they were able to start measuring as well. So this was a nice way, I think, to combine a very interactive online online session with with people also being physically present. And for coaches who are planning this kind of a project, it's a good way to maybe think about building projects that you can definitely bring some energy and excitement, motivation, if it's possible to meet face-to-face -face in, in some kind of a physical setting. But at the same time, it's all possible to do online as well. And then maybe before I have a few questions to, to Syria about how we sort of got here and and how this process was integrated into CargoTech. Here is some interesting comments that people keep, people gave up via an anonymous feedback form that we had at the end of the session. Nice different kinds of experiences. Maybe I'll highlight a few. Oftentimes it's easy for people to see that it was eye-opening to see how stressful my life is, or it was eye-opening maybe to see that I actually recover even if life is quite stressful right now. Many people commented that it made them more aware of how those kind of small daily choices affect their well-being, like just little things they can tweak during their workday or maybe in their evening routine. Many people com commented on the movement aspect, seeing the data, they realized how little movement they have, for example, if they work remotely and they started integrating some kind of movement into their days by maybe walking meetings or, or remembering to take a walk in the middle of the day. And this kind of a sharing of a common experience, I think, was really important aspect of that, that we, the um, Syria and her team and also myself, we try to really encourage people to share their sort of experiences with each other and discuss what they could do together, maybe as a team at the company to, to, to encourage each other to be more active or to take a break or not to disturb if somebody was taking a quiet break at the corner of the coffee room, for example, maybe taking five minutes of deep breathing exercises to, to understand that that's an important part of a performance sometimes. And so they shared these kind of findings in hallways and coffee tables. And we tried to encourage that, even if the result itself is very, very, of course, personal for everybody. I have one example of a graph here that maybe highlights a little bit of the type of discussions that I might have had with people. If the result was like this, where there was a lot of stress, mostly read sort of all day, really long work day, even continuing in the evening. And as you can see, half the night is quite, quite stressful for this person. When people had these kind of results, it was a good chance to kind of discuss that. How often do you do it? How often do you have this kind of 11 hour work days? How do you switch off when you have something like that? If you have evening meeting that you have to do because of time zone changes, for example, would it be possible to, for example, end your normal work day earlier and go for a walk or do some kind of exercise before your evening session? So very practical findings that people might get from their daily lifestyles and routines. And then, of course, sometimes people got some really positive findings, like this graph might be an example of somebody who can see that even if they weren't really doing a lot of exercise per se, seeing the blue bars here when they biked to work in the morning and biked home in the afternoon, they're able to get really good physical act activity benefits just simply from moving from home to office, either on foot or via bike. So sometimes there were these kind of findings that gave them positive sort of reinforcement that, okay, it's good to see that these things are actually really working for me. 
But maybe before I, I show a couple of examples from the group result, I could ask Syria at this point that, uh, since you shared a little bit about that background, that how did you end up sort of ended up with first beat and ended up choosing first beat as the as the sort of physiological measurement to include in this this Springs project? Sure. Um, well, we had had initial discussions already a couple of years back, but then uh, we we tend to have these projects coming and going. We had the first. Uh, uh, the, the plan with, uh, with merging with uh, Conecranes and, and then uh, park that and then this project came along and we, we felt that, um, that this is going to be a marathon rather than a sprint for our employees. We know that it's going to be a lot of extraordinary times and, and we know that there's going to be probably times of higher workloads and then hopefully balancing time uh, periods after. But we wanted to instead of uh, going to the teams and talking about different forms of stress and, and so forth, we wanted to bring uh, um, a concrete way of for you to look at and, and learn yourself that how, how, do, how stressful does your day look like to your body uh, with very precise, precise data, as well as then uh, understand that, that how well do you recover? We all, most of us wear a Garmin or Aura or, or something like this in our wrists or, or our fingers. And we had a discussion with uh, throughout the sales process that, okay, so what kind of added benefit does this bring? Uh, but we felt that, that there is, is a clear benefit to this since everyone gets uh, a very concrete data, first, of all, first and foremost, but then also a common language and experience that they can share with one another. And as soon as we started handing out the devices there in, in February, Already the next day or the day after, people were like, okay, so you have the, do you have the device on? Have you already done this? How was your last night? And, and these kind of uh, dialogues uh, started to spark uh, from, from the employees. And, and that was kind of what, what we hoped for, uh, to bring uh, a concrete way of, of handling uh, these, these stressful time periods in good and bad uh, stress uh, when, yeah. when our employees are experiencing those. So that's in yeah. short uh, how we ended up uh, yeah. selecting first it, it, one of the elements for the program. Yeah, and this was actually a question that came uh, already ahead of time from somebody that you, you already touched upon that a little bit, but maybe we can expand slightly if there's anything you can share about how did you sort of get the company to buy in for this project? Was it you and the HR team that were kind of pushing for this, but how did you sell it? the use of something like this to the sort of the key stakeholders in the company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, for sure, um, the employee retention, um, the, the workload question, um, uh, and these kind of topics were, were on the risk uh, map uh, from the, from the get-go. We knew that we don't have uh, that big teams, uh, that, that it's small teams that need to do both their operational work then the project work of, of preparing the, the three different BAs to all kind of a bit different scenario, uh, and then find a new path for them, professionally for themselves, which is of course the biggest uh, change uh, for them individually. And, uh, and we had a platform uh, which is called Leading People Through Change uh, in, the, in the project from the get-go. And, and as part of the platform, um, uh, after the uh, first, uh, uh, three quarters, we felt that we need to do something more concrete. Uh, at that time, we first worked with uh, with the line managers and through them, uh, but we felt that we needed to do something a bit more concrete that would be visible for the employees uh, that, that we truly want to offer our support and, and, and uh, different activities that, that support their well-being. Yeah, great. Yeah, and of, of course, we all try to highlight throughout the whole process is that this is for each individual's own learning. The data is not shared with the company or the employer. And so they didn't have to worry that, what if my result is bad? Is it going to be used against me? But obviously, it's very, very protected and private information just for the person who is doing the measurement. And if they wanted to share it with me, of course, then I had a chance to discuss with them. But nobody else in the company had any access to that. And the idea of this kind of a measurement, of course, is being to, to help people make some kind of preventative actions early enough before they are in a situation where the stress load has been too heavy for many months on end and they may be in a situation where they are facing burnout or some kind of a more serious overload situation maybe getting sick 
but instead if they data might help them see that okay i need to stop and really pay attention to this my, my sleep's looking very poor or i don't have any moments of recovery during the daytime what could be what could i do to start taking these kind of preventative steps in a way towards the normal level so notice the problems before the body really starts to say no and starts to have more serious problems and that's sort of the whole idea of this kind of data that it we, we get so though desensitized in a way to being stressed and to being tired that it can be hard to see that and data can open our eyes a little bit more effectively than somebody just telling telling you that come on you need to sleep longer or or, or things like that so yeah I'll, I'll show an example of uh, the group result. We, we only did this for the whole group. There was also internally some, uh, each of the teams could look at the group result for the teams. That was not the focus of the project because they, they felt very strongly that the individual learning is where the sort of the core of the project is going to be. But it was interesting to see that overall, the overall result, it had lots of range from challenging results to really good results. 60 points out of 100 was sort of the overall score that takes into account all different aspects of the measurement. I would say that's slightly better than, than average in a way that there was very, very few poor overall results. So, so mostly so-called moderate or fairly good. Some 72% of the results were moderate or fairly good and 25% were good. So just a couple percent had a very, very sort of low result that then we had a more detailed discussion or I had a more detailed discussion with them. And then looking at the sort of the sub area, stress and recovery balance, slightly better than our database average, 61, 58 is sort of the database average, but again, a lot of range. So some people had really good, some people clearly had some areas to improve. Sleep was maybe the area that had the lowest overall score and more most people had some challenges with sleep if they compared it to for example daytime recovery or exercise and and partially because of that we our final lecture on load of life we actually included quite a bit of sleep information on that so we took some focus steps to to give people some practical tools how they could improve their sleep physical activity I can maybe yeah go ahead comment there uh, before you move to the next one that that we wanted to build the program uh in such a manner that we did not predefine all of the steps, but we wanted to hand out the devices, see how it's going, see what where the bus is, uh, what does the data show to us, and then decide on the topics of the lectures. We had those dates reserved, but we agreed with Tina that, that let's see what our audience needs, uh, yeah. what is the, the, bit, the burning theme, and, and then focus on those. So I think the iterative uh, way of working with the project uh, worked really nicely. Yeah, that was a really good idea also, in my opinion, because sometimes it can be difficult to decide what is the focus area, but it, it focused on all areas, but with, with a, a special angle on sleep, because that is obviously the sort of the core of our well-being. Physical activity was on right on average level, 65 out of 100 points. There was many people who were extremely active, did a lot of exercise, were really into fitness. But then there was also quite a large group of people who where that was clearly the area that they needed to improve on. When I did some comparison from measurements done in the first half of the project and the second half of the project, the biggest sort of change was seen in physical activity points. So I was able to see some improvements. So the number of physical activity minutes and points in the second half of the project on average was higher than it was in the beginning. And of course, this is the area that in a way it's easiest to improve because it's it's just a matter of deciding that I'm going to start exercising or I'm going to start walking to work. Whereas it's a bit more difficult to say that I'm going to start sleeping better or I'm going to start handling my stress better. So it was good to see that concrete actions, actions that we're seeing in this exercise area, hopefully specifically by those people who had the lowest numbers in the beginning on that. Good, but I think that's the last slide that I have here. And before going to the sort of the thank you slide, I, I've got a couple of more questions here, um, maybe about the measurements, and then I'll check the Q&A box too. If anybody has questions, you can now write them in the Q&A, and I'll check them in just a few moments. But um, I, I wanted to ask this from you, that how, like to your ears, how did the employees take to this kind of a very physiological measurement to track their well-being? Did they have some 
concerns or worries that they needed to sort of clear before they were ready to do that? Hmm. Well, I think uh, one of the questions that, um, or the topic that was raised in quite a few discussion points was that, um, that we safeguarded that even us in HR, we didn't know who even signed up. <laughs> so, so we did it through, we had a QR uh, link uh, or QR code in the slides, and then they signed up directly through first bid. And, and we, of course, invited everyone, and, and then they came in uh, uh, to the sessions and so forth. But it was very important for us that, first of all, it's, it's completely for your only, uh, you and, and, and only you, uh, that can access the results. Uh, and we're not going to use these in, in any uh, group settings as such. Then the, the second uh, topic that uh, that came up that we had quite a few discussions is that, okay, so I, I have an overring. What the, what's the additional benefit of, of doing this? Um, that was a, another discussion point. And then um, the third one uh, was that there was, a, there was a lot of appreciation uh, for us offering this kind of a, a learning opportunity uh, for our employees because they know that we're not getting anything out of this other than that, of course, trying to help them. Uh, but but a lot of appreciative uh, comments uh, were coming in throughout the process. Yeah, and I heard that too from the, I mean, from the group sessions, people were really saying that they were quite excited about that. And I must say that I've done quite a few projects over the years and uh, the, the energy that I felt in the room with this project was really, it was really good. So I, I really appreciate the effort that you guys put in the setting it all up. And uh, I think one more, one more um, concern or worry that people might have had in the beginning that we tried to alleviate was that, well, I think I'm just a little bit worried. I think I have a lot of stress right now. I'm, I'm, I'm scared to see what the result looks like. And, and we tried to highlight that just make a measurement and see where you are at. You might be surprised. It might not be that bad. Or if it is, then you can start making some changes. But let's not wait for some kind of a perfect time in life because that usually doesn't happen. But instead, just just do it and then, then, then start learning what you could maybe do a little bit differently. So hopefully that lowered the threshold for some of the people that might have been a bit hesitant to do that in the beginning. Indeed, indeed, there was a lot of discussion. That, oh, I need to do it next because this, this week I'm traveling, or or this week I have the steering group meeting, so I know that I need to uh, work under pressure and and so forth. So people were maybe in the first round they were looking for the most optimal time frame to do that, and then once they realized that okay, I can do like ten of these, there's no limit, yeah. uh, then it started to free up, and we did see quite a big amount of of measuring uh, points uh, from our employees. Yeah. There is some a few good questions here that I can address. They are kind of a little bit measurement technical. So on the group results, uh, there's a question of how did we prevent the data from being biased towards people who took more measurements over the time period? So the, our algorithm does take that into account. So it takes the average result from each person. So if somebody has made six measurements and they are the one who has almost perfect points, it's not going to be biased as six really good measurements, but the average of those six measurements, the same if it if it's a bad result. So that our group report does they take that into account. And um, a couple of people have asked how big the group was. So it was around 90 people, I believe, ended up making measurements. It was offered to from to a little bit more. Not quite everybody took it. There were some people, like Syria mentioned, that had maybe a device that they were already using and they felt like they needed didn't need additional information but about 90 people ended up making measurements all together yeah. it was uh, around two-thirds uh that participated so a good good number of people yeah did sign up at the end. Yeah, yeah probably probably more like th yeah the, of the number that i had um yeah maybe maybe three-fourths even of the people yeah, even even that yes exactly yeah. yes yeah and um, and uh, regarding the question that there was one question here about that too, and what you mentioned about the, you know, why should I do this if I'm already have a Whoop or a Garmin or an Aura? Uh, in the f very first kickoff, that was asked from me also, and I tried to say that if you have a wearable device, by all means continue wearing that because that often provides some interesting day-to-day -day trends, and you can learn a lot from that. But this is sort of a more detailed and accurate look into 
different aspects of your day. We look at comprehensively the, the whole day and the night, and you have a visual of seeing what you did by filling your journal and then seeing how your physiology and your body adapts to that. So people could get some, some more detailed findings that they might not get from the numbers that the wearable device provides. But then, of course, that can support their day-to-day -day life because the first beat is not designed to be worn 24-7, seven, seven days a week, but it's more of a, a detailed check-in once a month, every quarter, every few weeks, however, works for people. And some people ended up making a lot of measurements. They really said that they got into it so much that they, they, they kept putting it back on because they wanted to test and try some things. Others probably did one in the beginning and maybe, hopefully, they are still doing it. And we will we we we're sending a few motivational emails sometimes from the HR, just reminding people that hey, remember that you have a chance to do measurements. And also, I sent some emails and, for example, before the group session, that if you haven't done your measurements in a while, now would be a good time. So then I can answer your questions when I'm actually there present again. So I think that helped that we had a fairly a, a proactive approach in trying to remind people and motivate them to to do measurements. But yeah, I think we are out of time now. It's quarter till we've been talking 45 minutes. So I'd like to say a huge thanks to Syria for agreeing to share the project. We had a lot of people online who were really interested to hear about this kind of practical carrying out of a project. And your, your guys' effort is really appreciated from our end too. If you have very, any questions for Syria, you can reach out to her. Her email is here. Uh, my colleague Juha Tupurainen, he's our sales director. If, you, if you're interested as a corporate on how you could offer this to your teams, you can reach out to him and he can tell more on what's possible. And uh, of course, if you want to read more about First Speed, you can find information on, on our website about that. But huge thanks to all the listeners and thank you, Syria and Cargo Tech. And uh, have a great day and enjoy the summer, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.